Thank you for joining us now, beginning from the Federal Capital Territory, where President Muhammad Buhari Wednesday inaugurated the Governing Council Board of Directors and Executive Management Team of the Ministry of Finance, Incorporated. Buhari performed the ceremony in the Council Chamber of the Presidential Villa in Abuja before the commencement of the Wix Federal Executive Council meeting. The MOFI, an investment vehicle, is part of measures to revive and restructure non-performing assets and boost government revenue. President talks the new board chaired by former Minister of Finance Shamsuddin Yusman to raise the value of MOFI's portfolio from the 18 trillion era to 100 trillion era by 2033. The president said the governing council is fully set up as a world-class investment company with the new management and board with core professionals with specialization in portfolio management. He said the new leadership will take steps to mobilize capital and invest its same in assets that are critical to the federal government's revenue drive. The governing council is chaired by the president with the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, as vice chair. And in the meantime, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission has disclosed that it has issued 11 new electricity generation licenses. This was disclosed in a next newly released report that details its activities in the first quarter of 2022. The regulator did not reveal the names of the new electricity generating companies and their capacities. The approval of 11 new Jenkos takes the country's electricity generating plant to 40 as it had 29 of them, 26 gas plants and 3 hydro plants before the latest edition. The 29 existing plants have a combined 13,461 megawatts capacity but they have been unable to generate up to 5,000 megawatts for some years now. The NECA also stated this in the report that it also renewed two of the existing licenses and transfer one on grid generation license. General Manager Kaduna Inland Dry Port Rotimi Hassan has said the absence of rail lines linking ports to the hinterlands has adversely impacted dry port operations in the country. Hassan said the lack of rail lines connecting dry ports to the hinterlands has made its operating costs to be very high. According to him, a dry port should be given the opportunity to operate solely as a dry port in other to have a seamless operation. He said there is no political will to back up dry port operations in Nigeria. Rotimi Hassan said that operators of dry ports in Nigeria were facing serious challenges in the area of documentation and also cargo movement. He said there was no customs template for the operation of inland container depot, adding that there should be a modus operandi for goods coming into the dry port. The stock market began the new month on a bullish run for the fourth consecutive session as the market gained 142 billion at the close of activities on the floor of the exchange uh, limited on Wednesday. The all share index rose by 261.01 absolute point, representing a gain of 0.49% to close at 53,499.63 basis point. Accordingly, investors gained 142 billion in value as market capitalization went up to 29.14 trillion. The upturn was impacted by gains recorded in median and large capitalized stocks among which are Seplat Energy, Nestle Nigeria, Gerigo Power, Nigerian uh, Exchange Group, and Stambik IBTC Holdings. The wild market breath closed flat with 20 gainers and 20 losers. Industrial and medical gas Nigeria and Seplat Energy recorded a highest price gain of 10% each to close at 7 Naira 70 Kobo and 1,210 Naira per share respectively. In comparison, Northern Nigeria floor mills follow with a yield of 9.46% to close at 8 Naira 10 Kobo per share. In the meantime, the Nigeria Customs Service has said it ordered the repatriation of 30 containers of wood to Nigeria because they were unlawfully exported. The Customs Area Controller of Team Can Ireland Command, Adikunli Uluyidi, who disclosed this in Lagos, said only seven of the affected containers had arrived 
adding that the service was still on the matter. Oledi, however, said recalcitrant uh, uh, clearing agent and system hackers had continually breached the vehicle identification number for the value of imported vehicles in order to evade the payment of duty. It revealed that some of the hackers had been arrested and were in detention. Oloye, they said that agents who cut corners to clear their vehicles were made to pay an extra 25% as punishment. Oloye denoted that the tonnage of export through the command in 2022 dropped because of the ban on wood and woody products exports. He said the figure reeled out showed a decrease in tonnage of export from 1.7 million in 2021 to 336,000 in 2022. And our Chief of Staff to President, uh, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, has declared that the presidency will lead the way for government institutions in line with Nigeria's energy transition plan to key into the global shift towards renewable energy choices. Gambari stated these are the State House in Abuja when he received in the audience a three-man team from EM1 uh, energy solutions that paid him a courtesy visit. The visit was a follow-up to an earlier presentation on options available to the State House to address its energy challenges. Gambari said the world is now focused on reducing the effect of climate change and what Nigeria is looking for is an energy solution that comes with environmental sustainability. He said the State House cannot afford not to be at the forefront with the first family. Uh, there and cannot afford blackouts and need to reduce how much they spend on diesel and cut down on carbon footprint. The plan seeks to tackle the dual crisis of energy poverty and climate change with renewable energy contributing at least 30% to the energy mix by the year 2030. And in the meantime, the Labour Party presidential candidate, Peter Obi, on Wednesday described as worrisome the recent downgrade of Nigeria's credit rating by Modi's investor service from B3 to junk bonds. Obi said that although the sad situation was a verdict on the government's inability to fix the Nigerian economy, the seriousness of the issue does not call for blame games but a determined effort to provide the solutions that can improve the fortunes of Nigerians and the country is safe. His campaign organization on Wednesday quoted Obi as saying that the ratings agency's bleak outlook for the country is a wake-up call on the need for fundamental change and a new approach to formulating and implementing the nation's economic policy. He said the press extends fiscal rascality, institutional vulnerability and social challenges faced by the country are issues that must be addressed frontally and with the seriousness they deserve. Obi maintains that despite the bleak economic outlook for Nigeria, our hope was not lost, adding that if elected, his administration would prioritize implementing policies that will address the nation's institutional vulnerabilities and social challenges. Away from there now, the board of directors of the African Development Bank Group has approved a dual currency trade finance line of credit for ECOWAS Bank for investment and development comprising $50 million uh, and 50 million euros. In a statement Wednesday, the AFDB uh, stated that an additional co-financing of $30 million for the credit line will come through the Africa growing together fund from the People's Bank of China. EBID uh, would use the three and a half year facility to provide direct financing to local corporates. Uh, according to the EFDB, part of the facility will also be channeled through select local banks for lending to key sectors such as agriculture, infrastructure and transport. It stated further that the ultimate beneficiaries will be the small and medium sized enterprises, local enterprises, cooperatives, and farmers in the West Africa region. Speaking soon after the board approval, the Deputy Director General for the West Africa region, Joseph Ribeiro, noted that regional development finance institutions like EBID are key partners of the African Development Bank and serve markets and client segment critical to the overall development of the continent. 
The Nigerian Communications Commission has introduced the Nigerian Girls Can Code as part of effort to bridge the gender gap between male and female stakeholders in the information communications technology sector. The Executive Vice Chair of the NCC, Umaru Dambata, stated this Wednesday during an award presentation ceremony at the Commission's headquarters in Abuja. Speaking through the Executive Commissioner, Technical Services NCC Ubale Masaka, or Masaka, the EVC said the competition was designed to enhance digital literacy skills and bridge the digital divide between the men and women. It stated that the inclusion of girls in the ICT was in line with the United Nations' efforts to empower girls in tech and close the digital gap. In his remarks, the Chairman NCC Board of Commissioners Adil Lakonde stated that the competition was designed to address the challenges of digital inequality, bring equity and narrow the digital gap between men and women in ICT. He disclosed that the winners of the competition were selected based on the application functionality, innovation, accessibility, commercial potential and overall national impact. The Federal Executive Council rose from its weekly meeting in Abuja Wednesday with an approval of the total sum of 15.5 billion for various contracts in the works in housing, education and industry, trade and investment ministries. Three ministers made this known while speaking with newsmen at the end of the council meeting, which was presided over by President Muhammad Buhari at the State House in Abuja. First to brief newsmen was the Minister of Works and Housing, Babatun de Fashola, whose memoranda received the highest funding of the day with 9.6 billion, said the council gave approval for refund of funds expended by Plateau and Bruno State and Federal Roads which fell within the period which the federal government gave uh, such in interventions. He further disclosed that his ministry sought and got approval of council to hire the services of private sector operator who would work with the federal government to build a central clearing house for the operations of two plaza concessionaires at his own expense, operate it, recover, and then ultimately transfer back to government. Also speaking, Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Nia Debayo, said Council approved about $1.8 billion a contract for the construction of a package sewage system for the authorities head office within the Liberty Free Zone in Aquaibom State. The Lagos State uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry has called on the Central Bank of Nigeria to enlighten the public on gray areas about the scarcity of the new Naira notes. It also advised the EFS Bank on the need to strengthen its policy implementation capacity. This was made Wednesday by the Director General of LCCI, Chinyere Amona, in a public statement tied to LCCI's statement on the facing out of old Naira notes. The Chamber lamented that businesses are suffering the consequences of the CBN's currency management policy lapses. It's also stated that clearly that the Chamber did not see any value in the CBN's extension of the deadline for facing out old notes as long as the scarcity of the new Nara notes persists. The Chairman of the Southern Nigerian Governors Forum and Ondo State Governor, Uluwa Rotimi Akeridulu, on Wednesday forted the current practice of fixing salaries and allowances of public officials by the federal government to reflect uniformity across the nation. Akiri Dolo, who said the practice was unacceptable in a polity uh, which prides itself as federal, explained that the logic of mopping up revenues agreeable to state and local government into general pool for purpose of, of sharing in accordance with some federal government legislation was anachronistic and retrogressive. Akere Delu stated this at the Zonal Public Hearing on the reveal of the 2008 remuneration package for political, public and judicial office holders in Nigeria by the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission held at Akure insisted that power must devolve to the federating unit for the country to lay claims to being a federal state. Akere Delu was represented by his deputy Lucky 
Aye Datiwa noted that it was not sufficient for the RMAFC to regulate the salaries of public officials charging the commission to make conscious effort to reduce the overbearing influence of the federal government and its institutions on the constituent unit to encourage development. He said every state should determine the salaries and allowances of its officials and they should be allowed to control their resources and pay taxes to the center. If you're watching business now, coming from our studios here in Lagos, still to come after the break, 28 South African companies to participate in four-day week pilot project. I'll bring you details and more news after this time out. Please stay with us.